Welcome back to ASD, A New Perspective, the podcast show where we help you understand what is going on in the mind of your child. And we always encourage you that growth for your child is possible. I'm Kat Lee, and in this week's podcast, part two of Dr. Gutstein's series, Well-Being and Our Children. Term well-being is starting to enter the autism literature, but the idea of providing the means for well-being isn't yet, and so it's still focused on how do we provide. And it's still focused on adults. Um, it's funny because there's such a separation between you know people providing, providing services for adults. The assumption is now you're an adult, you can't grow anymore. <laughs> We're just going to provide you support for who you are as a right now. And you're not going to get any better at it. You know, you're not going to get any better at these mental tools or mental resources, learning from experiences. So we're just going to provide you with, um, you know, support around who, whatever you are, and we're going to do it at, at, based on a diagnosis, not on your individual needs or development. Um, and then, of course, you have the children's services, which, um, you know, still focus on um, whatever things they're doing. I mean, what's interesting is they pick their own variables for outcome and they try to justify why those are good, right? It's what they're teaching. So they're teaching to the outcome variables like IQ points and the Vineland. And then those become the measure of success, which they're not very good at achieving even, but those become the measure of success, even though there's nothing to do with well-being, or, or again, what we're heading towards, they just sort of don't bother to do that. And, and recently there's been a few papers in the literature that bemoan that fact, but it doesn't change anything. Um, you know, it just continues on. And parents don't ever get um, information about what, what, what could be possible, uh, and nor do adults um, uh, achieve that. So um, yeah, it's, it's an important topic and it, it gets you into all kinds of areas. So in this area, we have to define more what is well-being, why is that important? What are the factors that we know contribute to that? And there's a big literature on that. And again, our model of it, um, you know, how is it being done in the autism world? Is there an emphasis on it? Yeah, people are entering it, uh, using it as a term for outcome. Uh, why is it not entering into clinical studies? Uh, one of the things we see is that there is no independent clinical research going on in autism. The people who do clinical studies are trying to defend their own model, that's all. Which is why I stopped doing RDI outcome. People said, why did you stop doing it? Because the complaint, which was legitimate, was you're just defending your own model. It's not independent. It's a conflict of interest. You need to study this independently. Here's the problem. There's no independent clinical researchers in autism. There's nobody. Um, unlike you know people who study other things in, in medicine, there's absolutely nothing, nobody. So. Um, becomes this void where the only outcome research, only clinical research is done by people trying to justify the thing they're making money off of, the thing that they're you know, devoting themselves to. And then <clears throat> the publications accept whatever outcome variables they say are significant as meaningful, right? So the, for instance, the Vineland has been used, even though the studies don't do very well with it, the Vineland has nothing to do with well-being in the world for most people. I mean, it has, a, I should say, sort of a minimum of, you know, can you take care of yourself and stuff. But it's an interview for parents around kids that was years ago developed for severely, um, you know, intellectually impaired children. It had nothing to do with functioning in a complex, dynamic world. Absolutely nothing. And we know that. And, um, and yet almost every outcome study tries to use the Vineland or an IQ test, which again, have no relationship to these things uh, or, or language tests or something, you know, um, which is gonna develop anyway for most people with autism. So there's no attempt to, to, um, to form your outcome variables or to see your goals as moving towards well-being, moving towards providing a pathway for self-managed well-being. And often it's sort of doing two things to them, um, or or for adults, just providing them with some superficial services uh, to survive, but not again giving them the mental resources to become better at, at navigating a complex dynamic world, um, which is harder to do. Clearly, it takes more time. It's a developmental pathway, 
you can't do it in three months, right, with a group. Um, so that's why I think you don't hear it as much. But people are locked into that. Grants are locked into it. Services are locked into this this other model of um, you know, which is not growth related, which is not developmental, and which is not about well being. Right? It's not about self managed well being. Well being and self management are very highly related. The idea that I know I have the ability, not only, you know, relationships are, I don't want to downplay relationships here, but it's been overemphasized, I think. And the idea that I have the agency, I have the um, resources myself, within myself, the agency to improve my situation. As bad as it is, I can help, I can contribute to things getting better um, is a critical factor in well-being. Because life isn't always going to be pleasant and life isn't going to be, especially, you know, you go to be an adult, you get out of school, there's going to be a lot of adversity in our modern environment, you know, a lot of unexpected things, a lot of uncertainty. And if you don't come in with the idea of I can handle things, I have resources to manage things if they don't work out or if I hit with unexpected bumps, right, I don't have to give up. And even if things aren't looking very good right now, I can figure things out. I can do things to make my life better. If you don't have that, you know, depression is right there, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just a spiral downward. Yeah, I just was going to say well-being really resonates with us as parents because it's what we want for our children. Uh, you know, it's really the heart of what we want for our children. And I know I, with my son, I stopped having him take assessments and measured how much he knew of this and that and the other a long time ago because it wasn't measuring his well-being and how that would be for him. But, but most parents in the autism community are miseducated and their, their peer group that they're in, the support groups they're in, they don't, they're not fed that. They're, they, don't, they don't expect that to happen. Um, uh, you know, if you're in a certain state where only those certain other treatments are covered by insurance, the experts are telling you to do them, whatever, then, and the parents are all saying, this is what we do. There's, it's sort of taken out of you. It's sort of, uh, yes, it's intrinsically what you would want as a parent, but you start to believe in this other system. Uh, it's unbelievable how many topics are actually related to when you, when you start getting into this um, from, you know, from infancy onward, uh, for understanding what autism is, right? That it's not inborn, you know, defect or something, that it's not it, it unchangeable, that it, it can, we can remediate, we can offer pathways all the way to things like, you know, transition programs and you know, the suicidality and, and, and depression and interventions and, and such. So, um, you know, just a parting thought, if you think about the billions of dollars that have been spent on, you know, genetic studies uh, and neuro, neuro, neurological studies and autism that have uh, uh, provided us absolutely nothing to help people with well-being and, and, and the interventions that have been done that don't do that. If you took that money and you think about if we could, if we had actually providing it and using at least a piece of it to move towards establishing well-being for people with autism, what, what a change that would make. You know, just consider that. It's, it's an amazing idea anything to think about, okay? Thanks for joining us for this special edition of ASD, A New Perspective, the podcast show where we help you understand what is going on in the mind of your child. And we do encourage you that growth for your child is possible. I'm Kat Lee. See you next time.